we are privileged to present to you Friends of Eternity, a special gathering with Supreme Master Ching Hai and Cherished Artists, Part 24. Our next guest is the incomparable Spice Williams Crosby. As the ultimate action actress, she has appeared in and done amazing stunts for countless film, famous film and television productions. And all on a plant-powered diet, she participated in a conference with Supreme Master Ching Hai at Supreme Master Television fourth anniversary event. Let's hear more from Ms. Williams Crosby in her talk titled, Making an Act of Conviction. With God, these are possible. Look at how easy it works. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Namaste. I want to thank you so much for allowing my family to be part of your family. It's a great blessing. And to be able to feel so much love and respect is uh, a great gift. And I feel overwhelmed with my son. We feel so overwhelmed with all these beautiful blessings from you. You look so beautiful. I'm proud of you. Thank you. So proud, so proud. I stand here today because of an act of conviction that I made to God on September 19, 1977. It all began in 1969 when I actually died on the operating table from a car accident where I was thrown 37 yards out wow. to land on my head. Oh, God. And that could explain a few things, but <laughs> I remember I was on the operating table and I felt a very heavy feeling on my chest and I heard the doctor say, we're losing her. Oh, man. And I slowly slipped out from my feet and looked down and there I was watching all these people trying to save me. Wow. And I thought, that's pretty cool. Near death experience, yeah. And then I wanted to see from the other side, immediately I was there. Uh -huh. And it told me I had no more body, I was just energy. Free, yeah. And little by little I felt a small pull and all the hard edges started to morph and I was going into a gray mass of air where I saw silhouettes of people, men, women, children, and animals. And I remember as a young girl, I was told by one of the sisters that animals don't go to heaven. And I remember at that moment, she was wrong. Animals are right here in heaven. Right. <laughs> I was pulled into this gray mass of air where it got brighter and brighter and brighter and there were massive bright lights, but there was one huge white light that I was presented to. Now I had no body and there were no words, but I was told, you are not going to die. You have something very important to do. And I had to go back. I had no argument, which is rare. I would have probably <laughs> bargained, but didn't you feel that, was, that wasn't a good idea at the time. And I proceeded back into my body I was in a coma for six days, even though I couldn't move. I heard everything. And the doctors came in and I heard, if she lives, she may never walk again or be a vegetable. Oh, man. Now it's obvious I can walk again, but they were right about one thing. I did become a vegetable. I was a vegan. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. From then, from that day on? Um, not quite, oh. but you know, as lessons come slow and fast. Yeah, yeah, um, I spent, after six days in the coma, I spent three weeks in a wheelchair, had to learn how to walk again, and two years recovering. Wow. The next eight years, I was a musician, singer, entertainer on the road, and those years were filled with a lot of drugs and alcohol. Mm. They were exacerbated by five members of my family, including my dad, who committed suicide, oh. and a childhood with massive abuse. On my third drug and alcohol overdose, I rolled out of the bed, crawled through the living room, pulled myself up on the stove, and looked up into the air vent where I was convinced God was at that moment. 
And I said, God, what were you trying to tell me in the light? And then I said, okay, God, here's the deal. You help me turn my life around. I swear I'll be an image that changes the world. And at that moment, I had to look around. Who said that? It was me. It was my soul for the first time. I heard my soul. Well, I never looked back after that act of contrition because making that promise to God was an act of conviction and there's no going back. And since then, I've accomplished many things. I'm an actress, stunt woman, martial artist. I hold three black belts and I'm certified in four countries to teach hand-to-hand -hand combat in self-protection. I have two master's degrees and a PhD. I'm a doctor of holistic medicine. Yeah. I'm a wife to a gorgeous man, wonderful man of 32 years, and I'm a mom to the most gorgeous yeah. child in the world, my son, Luke Crosby. Look at him. Your, your best achievement. If, if I never did anything right, I did that. Um, I also now produce faith-based film shorts and that's my way of giving back by spreading God's messages. So I've been a vegan for 40 years and I also have my own company, Spice of Life Meatless Meats. 40 years? And we have jerky, meatless jerky and meatless meats. Wow. Now in 2000, the year 2000, my husband Gregory Crosby, who's writer, producer and grandson to Bing Crosby, read this book called The Unlikeliest Hero about a young man, a young boy, Desmond T. Das, who also made an act of conviction. After he saw a picture of the Ten Commandments on his kitchen wall, number five said, thy shall not kill. And he was five years old and he didn't understand how could another man kill another man. So that was it. His act of conviction at that age to God was, I will never kill. But World War II came around, and everybody was signing up to help stop this war and help America win over evil dictators. Doss felt the need to join. However, he wouldn't touch a gun. Now, this is World War II, yeah. and because of this, they called him a coward. They beat him up. They broke his nose. They knocked his teeth out, and every night they threw ice water on him. Oh. He was a vegetarian in World War II. Yeah. So they took his vegetables away and gave him raw meat, and he just ate bread and water for months at a time and said, guys, might as well just put a gun to my head and kill me because I'm not quitting. I joined this war. Wow. He had to go to the U.S. Army court, fight it in the court, for his right to stay in this war. And they said, you know, a lot of killing takes place in the war. And he said, yes, sir. But I joined to save lives, not take lives. And at that, he said, make me a medic. They made him a medic and he worked harder and trained harder than anyone else. He was so good, he saved everyone's lives when they went out. And medic Desmond T. Doss, was a Seventh-day Adventist, and his Sabbath was on Saturday, the one day he set aside for God. Yet the day came when all the generals and the United States president came and said, there's a 400-foot escarpment cliff in Okinawa, and there are 17 Japanese soldiers up there that can see the sands and when the ships come in, and we cannot win this war by not getting rid of those guys up there. And they all said, okay, let's do it. And they said, ah, but it's on Saturday. That's Doss's Sabbath. So they said, Doss, are you gonna hold up the president and the United States to try and finish this? But then he remembered that Jesus actually, in some cases, cured the lame on the Sabbath. And he was told that this move would save thousands of lives and we could end this war. So upon that agreement he made, 
that he would go up and take care of all those men if only everybody knelt down and prayed with him. And that meant all the generals, and that meant all the higher-ups, and all these men who hated him and beat him up wow. asked him to pray while they t took a knee. In the early morning hours, Saturday morning, it was cold and raining, and the soldiers took fishing nets, threw them up, 400 feet and they climbed climbed 400 feet and 133 men reached the top and as they went over 17 Japanese soldiers machine gunned down every single one of those men in 27 seconds uh. Doss immediately went into action he ran he gave them morphine. He put their bodies back together again. He tourniqueted their legs and hoisted their huge bodies, dead weight, on his shoulders and ran hundreds of yards to that 400-foot cliff, wrapped a rope around his waist and a tree stump, and he shimmied, lowered down 75 men's lives to safety wow. and two Japanese soldiers. And they were like two Japanese soldiers. He goes, they are humans. They are fighting for their country just like we are. He was only five foot six and 135 pounds. That day, yes, he saved 75 men and those two Japanese soldiers. But in, over the course of other days, it was a culmination of 450 men. Wow. He saved their lives and not one bullet could touch him. Wow. He felt them whizzing by his hair. He roundhouse kicked grenades. But nothing could stop Desmond T. Doss. As he prayed over them, they were crying. They were screaming in pain, afraid to die. And he literally saved all these men to the point where they wanted to give him two medals of honor. And he said, no, he didn't even want them, but he accepted one. And those men in the process, found out that he had lost his Bible. Those are the same men that hated him and beat him up. After he got his Medal of Honor, they pulled their money together, went back to Okinawa after the war, and combed the island for two weeks till they found his Bible. Wow. See, he made an act of conviction rooted in God, driven by love, for the betterment of himself. But what it did was it bettered everybody else around him. Now, he never watched TV, never saw a film, and hundreds of producers wanted to make a movie on his life. He said, no, I will not do that. This was between me and God. I have no judgment about anyone else for what they chose to do in the war. But this was just between me and God. My husband, Gregory Crosby, when he read this book, The Unlikeliest Hero, about the Hacksaw Ridge, I came home one day and he was sobbing. I thought someone died. But I said, what happened? And he showed me this book and he said, you have to read this book. I read it and I was sobbing. I said, what are you gonna do with it? He said, I have to make a movie on this man's life. I said, well, good luck on that. But he tracked Desmond T. Doss down and he said, I would like to make a movie on your life. And Doss said, no, this was just between me and God. And Gregory said, I studied your religion. You had a printing press. You had a letter that said, go tell it to the world. And he said, yes, we did. That was the way we communicated with everybody to spread our love and our word. And he goes, well, Desmond, today the movies are like a printing press. Sometimes that's a hard argument. But my husband said, well, you read books, don't you, Desmond? And he said, yes, I read my Bible every day. He said, well, some people write satanical books too. You cannot blame the medium. Blame the people who are making those kinds of projects. He said, I give you my word. I will only be true to your faith. 
And so he thought about it and he said, okay, let's pray. They prayed and when they finished praying, he said, okay, son, you can make the story on my life. The movie was Hacksaw Ridge, the name of the escarpment. And he said, I don't want any money for it, not a penny. I will never see it. And I want a percentage of all the money to go to the children and to build schools. He was such an amazing man. His example of faith. Because you just can't walk into the hell fires of war with all the bullets and grenades and bombs going off and not have a gun. The fear, the fear of that thought just scared everyone, but not Desmond T. Doss, because he had something with him greater than his fear, and that was his faith. My husband felt a tremendous need to write the book of his childhood as to how he got his faith. It's called The Birth of Hacksaw Ridge, How It All Began. And it's this book. They want to make a TV series on it now. Wow. And it's all about the childhood that nobody really knows about. Everybody knows about Desmond T. Doss, his action in the war. But this is his childhood, how from he first made up his mind about his love, faith for God, and how he carried that through. I read this book and I, I cried because of the the innocent beauty and the fact that there's no Hollywood magic in this. It's just real. It's so real, it feels like it's being told through God. Supreme Master Shanghai, Gregory wanted to give this to you, sign this to you. Thank you. And he hopes that you'll receive this gift from him. I want you to all know that I thank you so much for allowing me to share my story and to share this story and to keep in mind that we walk by faith, not by sight. And that is, that is the hardest thing. If every day you question yourself about your own faith, Gregory asked Desmond T. Dawes, how did you not get hit by a bullet? It's impossible, absolutely impossible. And he said, well, son, I knew I had my angels. But also, I will tell you, if you connect every single day with God, in times of great trouble, miracles will happen. And I take that to heart. So for me, I can't get through a day unless I know I've connected. And Supreme Master Xing Hai, through all your teachings, you have shown a great light in a pathway for people that have faith because then we get stronger and stronger. It's just like if you want a strong body, you got to put a little resistance on those muscle to build. And that's what our spirit needs sometimes. Our spirit needs a little resistance, a little trouble, so we can work through that. Because in times of great trouble, miracles do happen. Thank you. Very interesting. A personal experience. Very interesting. <laughs> you took you took a good photo. Yeah, yeah. I told her to sit here so you can. Yeah. And then you can take a straight a photo of you. This is my husband there with Desmond Taylor on the day he gave me his permission. Wow. Oh. So much. Hospitable viewers, we appreciate your company today for Friends of Eternity, a special gathering with Supreme Master Qinghai and cherished artists, part 24.